Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Matthew Edelman. I'm a curator at the Door County Historical Museum, specifically the curator of collections. Um, I started working at the museum um, in 2021, uh, and the reason I bring that up is uh, I was, when I was hired, one of the things I was asked was there anything I was interested in researching, and I didn't have anything specific in mind, but um, somebody had mentioned to me the the lack of, of info on the history of the Door County Fair. And I thought, well, you know, that's an interesting topic. You know, it seems like something very common, but nobody ever really talks about or brings up. And lo and behold, after two years of digging through literally every Door County advocate, Democrat, and other newspapers um, that, that are online, um, I ended up with a presentation on the history of the Door County Fair. Um, so, I figured, you know, why not put together a talk? Um, it's, it's a very, you know, hence the title of this presentation, An Overlooked Tradition. Um, I think it's very interesting. Door County, the Door County Fair reflects um, what was going on, not only in the county, but also the world at the time, um, specifically the country, but also world wars, polio epidemic, um, and later past, you know, a few years ago, uh, COVID. I will say I did not get that far um, because my research kind of stopped uh, after 1979 because that's where the Door County Newspaper Archive stops. Um, but admittedly, I think the most interesting parts of the Door County uh, Fair are in this block from 1869 to 1979. So the beginnings of the Door County Fair start in 1865. Um, it's a note with a notice of uh, to organize the Agricultural Society. Uh, it featured members um, A.W. Lawrence, E.C. Daniels, E.B. Stevens, D.H. Rice, G.W. Allen, P.J. Simon, uh, George Bassford, J., uh, excuse me, John Garland, and W.K. Dresser. Um, the Door County Agricultural Society had attempted to organize in, 19, in 1864, um, but it had failed because of lack of funding and support. Um, so this is clearly right after the Civil War. Um, but it was, wouldn't be until another uh, few years until the first fair in Door County kind of came together, um, which was in 1869. So in September of 1869, the Agricultural Society had a membership of 121 people. So obviously it had grown since 1865. Um, it was, there was a fee of $1 per member. However, only 49 members had been paid up. Um, the society needed $100 in the treasury to qualify to claim um, from the state of Wisconsin for the promotional bounty for county fair. Um, the Agricultural Society um, uh, is basically the seeds of where the fair came from, and that should seem obvious to most people. Um, fairs weren't just a carnival, they were about agriculture, um, farming, and, you know, livestock. Um, so one thing, as I was going through the newspaper, even though the, the first fair was in 1869, the earliest advertisement for the fair I could find was from 1875. So it takes a little bit for the fair to kind of start being advertised. But nonetheless, my focus right now for the moment is still on the first fair. Uh, entry fee for the fair and its exhibits were $1, except for members of the Agricultural Society. So entry fee in terms of actually contributing something to the fair, not people coming into the fair. Um, refreshments were available for purchase, except, and a lot of people from Wisconsin might find this interesting, no ardent spirits will be uh, allowed uh, either upon or near the grounds. Um, regular admission to the fair is 25 cents for adults and 10 cents for children under 10 years of age. Uh, each member of the Door County Agricultural Society received free tickets. Um, and again, it was emphasized, no liquor will be sold or on or near the grounds. Um, despite the late season and cold weather, the first fair was um, October 20th and 21st. Um, apples, pears, and plums were the first, uh, or excuse me, were the only fruits exhibited. Robert Laurie, who you might know as uh, who won the Laurie Quarry, showed 13 varieties of apples. Um, even with good attendance, there were certain areas of the county, unfortunately, they were not represented by exhibits or attendants. Remember, this is the first fair. I'm trying to cover the whole peninsula, especially back then when it was hard for people to travel and that late in the season, um, it's not surprising there weren't enough people, you know, groups from all over the peninsula recognized. On the premium list for those awarded, um, a lot of these names will sound familiar. Robert Laurie again, um, for his best apples and his the most variety of apples. Uh, Joseph Harris Sr., founder of the Door County Advocate for his plums. Uh, D.H. Rice for best pears. Uh, Jesse Kimber for best turnip and largest cabbage. 
Joseph Zettel, interestingly enough, nothing about his fruit, um, even though he's the father of Door County Fruit Industry, uh, for the best pair of oxen, and A.W. Lawrence, who's an early store magnate, uh, for the best stallion. Um, <clears throat> because there needed to be $100 in the uh, treasury at the time, um, there were no cash prizes. Um, there was no horse races yet, which I mentioned because horse racing will become a huge thing as we go on. Um, but there are ox team contests, um, awards or diplomas for best stallions, gelding, colt, and uh, brood mare. Uh, best match, match team, pigs, buck, uh, sheep, ox, yoke, ox handlers. Uh, samples of vegetables, grain, flour, maple, sugar, fruits, wood, uh, wool, yarn, wool, and flannel, uh, rag carpet, silk shirts, flannel skirts, silk bonnets, straw bonnets, horseshoes, and nails. Um, and there was no entry free fee for the ox pulling contest. Um, now we're going to get into the 1870s. So I do want to point out, I'm not going to go through every year because we'd be here till the end of the time, but I did note uh, detail, as many details as I could. And I'm going to highlight through each decade uh, fairs that I find most interesting or reflect what was going on in the community. So I'm going to jump to the 1871 one, and I hope people recognize why this one is significant because this was during the Peshtigo fire. Um, it was much smaller fare, obviously, and less successful because of the Peshtigo fire and impacted the whole region, uh, obviously Door and Kiwani counties um, and up into Michigan uh, or up near Michigan. So the fair dates would slowly be moved back uh, to align better with the harvest and weather. So as we go through this, try to pay attention if you can, because I'm going to be talking about a lot, but you'll notice the fair uh, time period will shift. It will go from October to September to August to kind of where it is today and back and forth, which I find interesting is Door County is, was always trying to kind of chase the weather because sometimes it would be too hot, sometimes it'd be too cold, sometimes it'd be too wet. Um, so I just point that out as a side note. <clears throat> so the fair would continue on in the 1870s fairly consistently, popular but not hugely successful. Um, again, the earliest ad I have is this one from 1875. Um, then we get into the 1880s. Um, uh, for the next decade, the 1880s, the fair would experience a few rough spots because of financial problems from poor exhibits and lack of attendance, um, but would prove to be more successful as we get towards the 1890s and the turn of the century. Um, the 1882 fair was significant again because this is when they kind of, this was a, a last minute fair that was at the end of the October. Um, they weren't sure they were going to even host it, um, so it was, it was held at Bayview. Um, the 1885 fair is also significant, which I found interesting because they held it in Sevastopol. Um, and I assume this is also last minute, but again, a lot of these fairs, um, one of the problems is the newspaper, which is my main source, doesn't always talk in detail about a lot of this, a lot of the details of the fair. Um, oftentimes it's just a little blip, a little article. Um, and not until later do we start getting into the more numbers and how much things cost and prize winners and things like that. Um, by 1886, um, premiums uh, started showing up and were over $1,200, which is a lot of money back then. We start getting bigger things like baseball games and horse trots. Um, the 1887 fair was particularly significant. Um, it was combined with the encampment of the veterans of the Grand Army of the Republic, or Union Army Civil War Reunion, with some 300 veterans in attendance. Um, there was free admission and meals for the soldiers, a huge uh, agricultural annual ball. And again, this is where we start seeing horse and harness races um, become much more prominent. Um, and this is, as you can see on the right there, this is from the 1887 one. Um, by 1889, so just three years later, um, excuse me, two years later, we get uh, $1,500 in premiums and purses. So as we go along, more and more money is being put into the fair. Um, the fair was beginning to gain more momentum, like I'd said, um, in the beginning of the 1890s. But uh, as with most issues with the fair um, had faced up to this point, financial issues would start to kind of catch up to them. So the last fair um, for a long period of time, because what happens, as I'll explain, is, the, is, the, is a financial crisis, was that in 1889, um, there were, uh, this is the 20th fair. Uh, Scottish Games, which I wasn't quite sure what Scottish Games meant, but apparently it is lifting, running, jumping, shot put, uh, wrestling, and my favorite, uh, broadsword contest. So they'd actually have sword fights, um, which is incredible, and I would love to have been there. 
Um, bicycle races, again, horse races, uh, grand ball. Balls were a big part of this uh, during this time period. And an incredible, must have been an incredible balloon ascension with a parachute drop. Um, but like I had said, um, by 1893, there's a financial crisis um, when not even a double balloon ascension uh, could lift the Door County Agricultural Society out of the financial debt. Um, and in addition to financial troubles in Door County, um, the United States was in the midst of one of the many late 1800 financial recessions. Um, other problems, a fire earlier in the year ravaged the fairgrounds um, and the cost of repairing the buildings as well as holding the fair proved to be one of the contributing financial factors. Uh, the Door County uh, Agricultural Society had mortgaged the fairground property for much more than it was actually worth. Um, the mortgage holder offered to reduce the value to about $1,000, which was a substantial amount of money at the time, but they were unable to pay the mortgage and it was foreclosed. Um, various fairs in neighboring counties would fill the gap the Door County Fair, including um, Menominee had fairs, Kewanee counties, um, and even obviously the Wisconsin State Fair in Milwaukee at the time. Um, by 1896, the fairgrounds were leased by uh, Messrs. Tobin and Barrett for five years, uh, commencing in to, to try and build a new fairground. Um, but by 1899, it was clear that wasn't happening, so an interesting character named Barney Hahn would host his own fair and his opera house to fill the gap of the Door County Fair. Um, during the next 15 years, Door County would begin to evolve out of its old logging-based econo economy into a much needed period of economic growth and prosperity. Um, so this is when Door County starts as we get to the turn of the century, kind of turning into the Door County we think of now. Um, it's during this period that um, Door County would send exhibitors to Wisconsin State Fair to be, um, like I said, being held in Milwaukee. So nonetheless, Door County's agriculture is still being represented throughout the state. Um, agricultural became the focal point of the county's economy, as I'd mentioned. Um, dairy farms and cheese factories began dotting the peninsula. Uh, prominent members Zettel, Hatch, and uh, Goff began really honing in on their horticulture development and expansion. Uh, the Reynolds brothers introduced food processing on a larger scale. Um, the only thing missing was an annual event to show off these wonderful new agricultural advance advancements and growth within the, the county. By 1906, um, a number of prominent members, J.C. Dana, T.H. Hopkins, Job Tong, Henry Grass, and Henry Fetzer, uh, incorporated a new Door County uh, Agricultural Society. It was capitalized on $10,000. Um, the County Board of Supervisors contributed about $2,500. Again, these are all huge sums of money at this time um, because the last uh, incident at the fairgrounds, a new site uh, was determined for the fairgrounds. And this is where we get where the fairgrounds is today. Um, <coughs> 40 acres to the east side of Sturgeon Bay for $3,000. Um, in the summer of 1908, uh, the Door County Agricultural Society began preparing and erecting new exhibition buildings. Now I will note that I didn't find anything from 1908 even though that is when the fair returned which I found very surprising as they invested so much money into it I would expect uh, advertisements so it wasn't until about 1911 that I started finding ads again. Um, but for some promoters the delay between, of the fair between, uh, between when it ended in 1892 to 1908 uh, this proved to be uh, too much and so, as I'd mentioned, one of the characters, Barney Hahn, began to promote his own private fair. So Barney Hahn was quite the character, and I bring him up because he kind of always fought the local county government. He fought with farmers. He's just kind of this, this eccentric character. Um, but ironically, he ended up promoting the fair by kind of competing and talking out against it. Um, <clears throat> he was best known as establishing the Opera House in Sturgeon Bay. Um, he purchased a farm in Fish Creek and remained there till his death in 1931. He had many business ventures and he got into po local politics. Um, he was a county assemblyman. A lot of farmers hated him. He was just, he was just quite the character. Um, and again, he started his own fair, which actually encouraged the county to be more interested in fairs. Um, and it's also suspected that he um, committed acts of arson throughout the peninsula, including burning down his own opera house. Um, I bring him up again, just such an interesting character. I'd actually love to do an entire presentation on the guy. But nonetheless, sometimes, you know, the more you talk out against something, the more popular it becomes. But 
1908, like I said, this is when the fair uh, kind of returns. Um, unfortunately, there was a torrential rain. After the rain stopped, we had cold weather set in. Um, but this will be symbolic as we move forward. Um, the public was not deterred by the troublesome weather. Thousands showed up. Um, so many people showed up that the fair ran an extra day because to, the demand was so high. Um, as, as we get into 1911, as we are uh, on, on my ads being shown, um, the, the fair returned each year with even more uh, enthusiasm, attendance, um, and increased attractions. Um, again, the big horse races started becoming more and more popular um, in 1911. Um, by 1912, the cost of the fair and its attractions were quite large for the time at $900. Airplanes came to the fair, um, and thank goodness, because uh, they actually helped keep the deficit down. Uh, stunt pilots, big livestock shows, uh, booster, you know, county fair boosters, and again, I'm going to keep saying it, lots of horse races. Uh, we get to 1914. I point this one out because this is a particularly spectacular fair. Um, they increased the admission, um, but it didn't deter uh, people from coming. We have famous acrobats. Um, I love this picture. The gentleman in the car is named Harry Hawks in a speed exhibition and his little red devil. Uh, beat more stunt pilots, baseball games, which were a huge thing because they were affordable and they usually used local teams. Um, 1915 is where we get... Um, this is considered the uh, 50th anniversary of the fair. I point this out. The fair management admitted that the first fair had been in 1869, but ins uh, insisted that since the first attempt to stage a fair had been in 1865, they should consider this the fair's birthday. As we go on through the history of the fair, I don't know why the county does this or the county boards, but they shift the dates of the first fair, when there's anniversaries, what they consider anniversaries. A little bit odd side note, um, but nonetheless, another uh, fantastic uh, fair. There's cattle auctions, again, more horse races, um, a very interesting baby contest where they had a contest who had the most pretty baby. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, Move to 1916, this is another big one. Um, for the first time in the fair's history, the fair was not only out of debt, but there was in fact a surplus. Uh, Wisconsin governor at the time, Philip, was the guest of honor. U.S. Senator R.M. LaFollette La uh, delivered an address. There was a stock parade. Um, I wish I could find images. There's apparently a, a giant wedding cake that the entire uh, fair crowd was allowed to take part in. So I can't imagine how big that must have been. Um, again, car races, horse races. As you can see every year, the county tries to gear the stuff up to be bigger and bigger. Um, by 1917, as you can see on the ad there, um, Door County combined with the Kiwani uh, County Fair. It was the kind of thing where Kiwani was kind of not as prominent, it was starting to become not as prominent as it used to be. So they figured why not combine um, to kind of make the fair bigger for everybody and kind of also to reach not just outside our county, but kind of reach the, the whole peninsula. We always think of where, the, you know, Door County is where the peninsula cuts off, but that's not necessarily the case. <clears throat> um, 1918, um, is particularly interesting fair because obviously this is in the midst of World War I. Um, they had a patriotic day. Um, Kiwani County and Door County had a farmer's day. Uh, particularly interesting was they had sham battles is what they called them, uh, trench warfare maneuvers um, for supporting World War I. So they would reenact fights, um, which I found quite interesting and I'd imagine slightly traumatic if you had a son you know, in World War I at the time across, you know, across the world. Um, but nonetheless, that was their idea of patriotism at the time. I understand supporting it, but just a very odd way of doing it. So um, another really fantastic year for the fair was 1919. Um, this is the first year Door County had a Ferris wheel at the fair. Um, that was a huge deal at the time. Um, this image on the left, um, Brownie was the race car driver, and then uh, the flying squirrel was the airplane pilot. They had each other race. Um, which I think is fantastic. Again, I just love that image. Um, Children's Day was the first time they had kids uh, be able to come in for free. Uh, again, baseball games, horse races, things like that. Uh, by the time we get to the 20s, um, the fair started to decline again, unfortunately. Um, even though the 1920s, at least earlier, were perceived as being, you know, fantastic. The war was over, people were young and, you know, could, could come home. 
uh, financial conditions were not great um, at the time. Um, the state started having to pay more and more out uh, for the prizes because um, they couldn't, you know, the county couldn't keep up with trying to give out awards for, for different uh, uh, agriculture and things like that. Um, but they kept a lot of the big stuff like airplane flights. Again, I'm going to keep saying it and you're going to get tired of it, but horse racing, um, that's such a prime thing for it. Uh, 1921, we get uh, fireworks, which become a very big part of actually all fairs. But for Door County, that was the first time they had fireworks. Uh, Cherryland Band, I'm going to say it again, horse races. <laughs> um, 1923, um, this is the first time um, you kind of get volunteers who are trying to save money. So they had patrons participate um, to help reduce costs. So a lot of sports activities that have, you know, think of kind of like a gym class, you know, you'd have a bunch of people, they'd break them up into teams and play sports. And that was kind of part of the fair, which I really like that idea of a low cost, but very community uh, supported activity. We get to 1924. Um, this is when the fair moved again from the middle of September to August, kind of where we think of now. Um, this is again in hopes of better weather conditions. Um, even with the dates moved, the weather proved to be equally kind of, you know, unsuitable. Uh, also, the, the, the problem with this at the time was that the date moved conflicted with a late cherry harvest during, this is specifically in 1924. Um, but nonetheless, a big historical pageant, um, county athletic meet, um, ma again, merry-go-round and Ferris wheel, horse races. Um, and then what happens is um, because of the above barriers, again, of weather and again, financial problems, the fair uh, didn't happen again until 1928. Um, but this was a big turning point in 1928 when um, the fair returned. Uh, we get one of the prominent uh, uh, individuals who helped kind of resuscitate and bring the fair back to its glory uh, with Ben Rossi, um, new, with the help of new fair management specifically, Ben Rossi, um, the fair returned again in 1928. Um, he came to the attention of the county when he ran a successful junior fair at the high school in Sturgeon Bay um, during the last few years when there wasn't a, a fair in 1926 and 27. Uh, the county was so impressed with his promotional and or organizational skills, um, the logical conclusion was that Rossi should manage the Door County Fair, uh, and again demonstrated the desire um, from the people to hold a county fair. I, I'm, I make a note of this because every time the fair gets canceled, people get very, very frustrated and they want it. And as soon as the fair comes back, it's a huge success. It's kind of this, the roller coaster effect of, of does, the fair does really good, it does bad, it gets canceled, People demand it, it comes back, and it's this booming success. Um, in 1928, when the fair returns, um, the attendance accre increases and is 11,000, which is a huge number. As we go on, we'll see it rise even more. Um, we have a few fun acts, cow calling and chicken calling contest, which I have loved to have seen. Um, then we get into the Depression years, and the, I find kind of interesting that actually the Depression years were some of the most successful years for the fair. Um, and I think part of it is that um, not only Ben Rossi know, knew how to handle the fair, um, but he started asking for volunteers. So again, the fair is this big community thing where instead of being able to pay workers, people, because they love the fair so much, are willing to volunteer running food stands and, and the carnival rides and volunteering. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, so even in 1930, um, with the Depression, um, you know, strong, there's still 10,000 people that show up. Um, there's a huge night fair, which I thought was really interesting, that that was a kind of a new concept at the time, that instead of having the fair during the day, why not have activities at night? Again, a concept we would kind of take for granted today, but that was a big deal at the time. Um, by 1931, again, to show how uh, interested people love the fair, 1930, 10,000 people, 1931, 16,000 people. So, I mean, that's a big increase from just a year. Uh, by 1933, there's almost 18,000 people. By 1934, um, there's a new grandstand. Um, with over 25,000 people. So just to give you an idea of how quickly and how enthusiastic people were for this. Um, <clears throat> then we get towards, I'm going to jump to the war years as we start leaning towards World War II. Um, the, again, the fair is still very popular, um, but 1937, um, 
would be another significant year. This is when we change over to probably one of the most, if not well-known uh, people who, to run the fair um, is John Miles. Now, John Miles, um, for those of you who don't know, um, he was uh, considered or is known nowadays as, you know, uh, Mr. Door County Fair. Um, although he originally wasn't from here, he's born in uh, Oskaloosa, Iowa, moved to Sturgeon Bay when he's 26, so quite older. Um, he was a veteran of World War I and would work in the orchards here. Um, he would get a start with the Door County Fair in 1928. Um, he was friends with Ben Rissey because he worked on the, on the county, uh, excuse me, the fair board. Um, but he would succeed Ben Rossi um, in 1937, like I said, and arguably is, is known as one of the most successful, if not the most successful, uh, fair runners. Um, that's not to diminish or, or talk ill of other, other well-known people who have run the fair, but John Miles is kind of the face of it. Um, the, uh, the, the current Door County Fairgrounds, for those who don't know, um, in Sturgeon Bay was named in 2001 the John Miles County Park, um, just to give you an idea of, of his legacy and his dedication. Um, when the fair returned, or excuse me, before the fair returned, um, attendance was over 30,000 when uh, John Miles took over, just to show you how successful and enthusiastic people were. Um, 38 was an even bigger fair, uh, it was close to 32,000 people, which is just, even for 1938, even today, that's a lot of people. Um, but again, surprisingly, the, the, the 30s were quite a successful time period, even though you have, you start with the Depression, and you end basically with start, you know, the beginnings of, of World War II. Um, <clears throat> 1942 uh, would be the uh the last fair before um it had been cut off by for two three years until i believe 1946 if i remember correctly yes that's what it says 1946. Um, this was known as the victory fair um, again fell victim to world war ii um, another big fair that had army war shows um, automobile thrill shows a variety of vaudeville and circus acts uh, this is where we start getting things like horse poles um, beyond just the horse races and harness races. Um, after the war, again, the fair returned, yeah, 1946. Um, although not quite as impressive as, you know, 30,000, um, the attendance was still 20,000. Um, another side note about when the fair returned, um, for those who aren't familiar, the chemical DDT was sprayed on some of the buildings in the Midway, so I don't know if I'd want to be there at the time. But again, very common things associated with the Door County Fair, baseball games, horse pole, harness races. Um, <clears throat> as we get out of the 40s, we start getting into the 50s, and we start getting into um, a much more modern looking fair. But before we get there, one of the, uh, the last big significant fairs, and I point this out a little bit to insert uh, the museum into it, was uh, 1948 was part of the anniversary celebration of Wisconsin's 100 years of statehood. Um, the fair held what is, was called the Peninsula Cavalcade. It was a pageant of Door County history, and it was based on a script by Hjalmar Holland and Harry Dankholer. Uh, Hjalmar Holland started the Door County Historical Society, and Harry Dankholer is the founder of our museum. So I just thought I'd touch on that. Um, it also celebrated the Golden Jubilee, so I thought it was interesting. Um, yet not surprising that those two very prominent uh, historical uh, preservation, you know, people uh, 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 contributed to, to the fair and it's, you know, the celebration of, of Wisconsin statehood. Um, again, by 1950, um, we get a much more consistent, like I said, modern fair. Um, 1950 was a specifically uh, uh, excellent year for the fair. On Sunday alone at the fair, over 10,000 tickets were sold. Again, this is another about 30,000 people attending the fair. Um, these, the 50s were very successful, um, and, and except until we have, um, well, we'll get, to, we'll get to 1955, but one of the ones I wanted to point out because I just find endlessly fascinating is the 1953 fair. Um, this was specifically interesting to me, and I, I wish I could find photos of it. Um, was Al Tanzer's World Championship Wild West Rodeo. Now, if you, if you note on the, on the right ad, there was over 100 head of stock um, and a cast of 65 cowboys and cowgirls. Even by today's standards, that must have been an incredible, 
incredible show. I would still go see that to this day. Just, you know, again, people think of Door County as a small little community, you know, maybe have these tiny, a tiny little fair. That must have been absolutely stunning. And again, I really am disappointed that even in the newspaper, there aren't pictures from it. Um, I had talked to uh, Father Birdsall, who's a prominent uh, 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 person who, who contributed to the fairs over the years, and he was a little boy at the time, and he told me it was unbelievably spectacular. So that is the only confirmation I have of how good of that must have been. So I had to note that. Um, 1955, the reason I bring that one up, although there was an advertisement for it, if you look on the right there, um, the fair did not happen. And the, the reason was because they canceled it to uh, prevent the spread of the polio ep epidemic. Um, although there are very few cases, if I remember correctly, the newspaper said maybe three or four cases in the county. Um, they were just concerned, especially because little kids attend the fair, and so they, they decided not to uh, hold the fair that year. But thank goodness, nothing serious came of it, and the fair returned in 1956. Um, one of the more other prominent fairs that I wanted to bring up was the 1958 fair. Um, this one was specifically uh, interesting because legendary actor and musician known as the singing cowboy, Gene Autry, uh, was there at the fair, which at the time, and to me even still to this day, must have been just a, an exciting time to be there. Um, such an important person, uh, character at, at the time. Um, again, 50s were quite successful, 60s, same kind of thing. You start getting much more steady things, but uh, the 60s, again, each decade as we get towards the modern era started uh, uh, more things people associate with fairs. You start getting motorcycle races, um, you get uh, uh, demolition derbies, uh, things like that. Much more modern things beyond agriculture. Even though agriculture and the 4-H club and all these things are the anchor of, of fairs, um, you start getting more kind of for better and for worse, a little bit more of that carnival kind of feel to, to the uh, fairs, but they were huge draws. Again, th during this time period, you're consistently getting 30,000, 20,000 people coming to the fair. Um, it was a thing to do, you know, even as television started becoming more prominent in people's homes in the mid-century, um, these were still huge draws. 1964 was a significant year also. Um, we get I don't know if anybody is familiar with, but Bobby V, he was an American singer um, at the time, a, uh, a teen idol, um, a, a, a unique uh, person to bring to the fair because it draws in more young people. So again, even though this is about agriculture and farming, it started to become more and more about bringing in young people. Um, we get, again, for some reason, I love the idea of these giant rodeos. Um, Again, motorcycle races, always, always horse pulling, um, horse trots, uh, harness races, things like that. Um, we have junior fair spelling contests in the 60s, uh, 66, um, and I'll talk about this image in a second. 66, we have a Lassie show, although I doubt it's actually the dog from the TV show. They, I assume they bring dogs in um, that look like Lassie, but that was a big pull. Um, but this picture I love, I pulled out of the newspaper. Um, is a picture of John Miles um, proudly looking over um, the fair getting ready and being successful. Um, this is, I think, is a fantastic, iconic photo of a man proud of his work of promoting and keeping the fair going um, through all these years. Um, again, through the late 60s, we started getting much more common things that, 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 are, that we think of today. Motorcycle races, and I keep bringing up motorcycle races. Well, as we get into the 70s, I'll, I'll interject a little bit of a... Uh, personal note about the motorcycle races. Demolition derbies, which is even to this day in 2024, there's still demolition derby happening at the fair. Um, although the fair is still successful during these time periods, it's starting to become much more of, I wouldn't say generic, but a little more commonality between our fair and other fairs, um, for better and for worse. But I still think it's important to point out that you know, through all this, Door County still has its identity underneath all this um, with lots of local support. But I really like the, uh, on the right when the newspaper starts getting much more clear images of what the fair looked like. Uh, one of my problems going through the fair, this is a side note, is that um, there's sho a shocking lack of images of the fair, which I find very surprising. It was such a colorful, exciting event, um, even as we get into, again, the, you know, the 60s and 70s that I'm talking about now. There's just 
there's not a lot of images of people, um, which I think is a little disappointing. Um, so any opportunity I had to find uh, images of the fair, again, out of the newspaper, uh, I did my best to put them in here. Um, by 1971, um, this would mark um, 103 years um, since the beginning of the fair. So this is the 74th fair. Um, it would continue to grow and become, again, I keep saying this every decade, but this is where we really get the modern fair we think of today. Um, not just shaping into it, but this reflects um, what we think of, of the, the fair today. So with the Door County Fair can, coming up here, uh, uh, here right now in, in Door County, this, this looks very familiar to all of us. Um, again, I'd mentioned not a ton of photos of people, so I, I'd really like this girl with her her prize-winning horse. I think it's very fantastic. Again, it sh I think it shows the community, people being happy, people being proud of their, of their you know, uh, of what they do, you know, growing their own fruits and vegetables and raising their, their livestock. Um, um, but 1971, uh, as I mentioned, was an, is, uh, specifically important because it was the mark of the Centennial Fair. Um, this decision resulted in many people believing that the first fair was in 1871. So I'd mentioned um, if you, you know, people often changed, or the, excuse me, the county board would often change when the, what was considered the first fair. If you go on the county fair website to this day, um, they still list 1871 as the first fair, even though it was not, it was 1869. But I just wanted to point that out. And I think that's where this comes from. Um, but this was a big deal. Um, Dotty West Country Music Show, Bell City Amusement, so all the carnival rides people think of. Uh, one fun fact that I love about this uh, is the League of Women Voters uh, helped uh, women to register to vote. Um, tetanus shots were offered, um, although not all that fun. I still like the positive attitude towards things like that. Tractor poles, this is where we start getting common things like tractor poles, um, another thing we think of at the fair nowadays. An exciting one, again, another thing I wish we had an image, I could find an image of is they had uh, snowmobile drag races, which I think sounds really fun. Again, harness and saddle races for the horses, demolition dermies. Uh, 1972 is Old Timers Day. I point this out because uh, people over 70 uh, were guests of honor, including a free pass to the, uh, to the afternoon grandstand show, um, the Texas Wild Horse Troop. Um, I really like the idea of promoting and supporting, uh, you know, older people in the communities that had kind of previously built the importance of the fair and, you know, younger generations coming in and maintaining it. Uh, 73, this is not a particularly special fair, but I really just, again, finding actual images from the fair. And this one's just, I think, just striking and beautiful. It's at night and it's a real short exposure of, uh, you know, the Ferris wheel. And again, very iconic. You think of the fair now, and this is what, you, you know, at least I picture in my head as you're at night and you see, the, you know, the, the food stands and, you know, the, the carnival rides lighting up the entire, you know, area. I, I just, very iconic, beautiful image. Um, and then 74, the reason I showed these two flat track racing um, ads from out of the advocate is that, uh, Motorcycle racing was such an important part of the fair in Door County at the time that uh, a very prominent motorcycle magazine known as Cycle Magazine, which is long gone, ha would come to the fair um, to cover it. And so people literally all over the world would come to the Door County Fair to do flat track racing. Again, we think of motorcycle racing, you might think of some, you know, this, I don't mean this in an insulting way, you might think of some country boys riding the motorcycles, but no, this was actually a big deal and was covered by like a world-renowned motorcycle magazine. Um, I insert this because I grew up around motorcycles, my dad was really into motorcycles, and I should have brought it in, um, but I, it's, it's old and I didn't want, you know, it to be damaged, but he actually has a couple cycle issues where they go to the Door County Fair. Um, and it's really cool because those are some of the best images I've actually found of the motorcycle races at the fair. So a little bit inserting some of my own personal, uh, you know, flavor into this, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. Um, 75, we get, again, things we think of modern now, stock car racing, uh, tractor poles, things like that. Um, and you can tell, at least I think, the advertisements are starting to become much more kind of modern. Um, and I love these. Um, just great. And we're kind of coming to the end of my research, but nonetheless, um, some great ads. I love the, the un, 
1977 one, this demolition derby stunt action image. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I love seeing this car flying through the air. And then 1979 is the last year that I was able to research the fair. Although another significant and successful fair, nothing really stands out. Um, Demolition Derby, again, huge deal. Um, all the obvious things, stock car racing, horse racing. Again, by 79, I would argue we are in the modern day. And maybe to some people that seems like a long time ago, but in the perspective of, of, of the history uh, um, of Door County, that's pretty recent in my book. So this is, this is where I kind of end my, my my talk about the Door County Fair. Um, by no means is this the end of the fair, as I mentioned, as we all know, the fair is going on uh, right now this week, um, but rather the end of the available information I could find um, that was really detailed. Um, my research is far from over. Um, I've yet to look at um, there's microfilm. Um, you know, I would love to conduct oral history interviews with other people. Again, I talked to Father Birdsall. Um, who, who is a very prominent member and part of the, the, the fair. Um, but I want to point out this is kind of an ongoing project. I have inadvertently become kind of uh, the fair guy, uh, which is okay. Um, but if anybody ever has any fair material, um, fa you know, fair guidebooks, uh, premium lists, fair ads, um, posters, I would love uh, to see them, you know, or if you're interested and would like to donate them to the museum. Uh, one of my goals is to do a, a fair exhibit at the museum because as someone who's researched it so much, there's so much potential to do something really engaging with the community um, at the museum to represent the fair. Um, so please contact me or anybody else at the Door County Historical Museum. And that concludes my talk about the fair. So thank you.